This equation, which is known as the Tsiolkovsky Rocket Equation, was first derived by the Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky in 1903. Uh, he is regarded as the father of space flight. And there are several ways to derive this equation. I am using the method of conservation of linear momentum in order to derive this equation. Hope that would be convenient to understand. So let's begin. Hello my dear viewers. Today I am going to derive the rocket equation. Yes, you heard it correct. I am a big fan of rocketry and space flight. And I am sure that you are also keen to know the fundamentals which govern the subject. So let's dive in. Rockets gain its velocity by burning some kind of fuel. In this process, mass of the rocket continuously changes as a mass of propellant was initially inside the rocket is ejected out. This implies that the acceleration of rocket continuously changes assume that the engine thrust remained the same. We can analyze this phenomena by using the famous equation F equal ma if we assume the thrust provided by the engine is constant we can now see that when the mass of the rocket decreases the acceleration should increase to keep the force or the thrust constant thus conventional newton's equation of motion such as s equal ut or s equal ut plus half at squared or v equals u plus at cannot be used to describe the motion of a rocket. So it requires further der derivation. These equations cannot be used because it assumes constant acceleration of the vehicle or the rocket. So it requires further mathematical derivation as I mentioned before. So let's go forward to derive the rocket equation. I'm considering three instances of the motion of the rocket in order to derive the equation. Instance one, when the rocket is traveling at constant speed without firing its engines and the instance 2 after an infinitesimal amount of time having started to fire its engines and it has reached a small increment in its speed v plus dv and it has ejected a small propellant mass backwards dm with the velocity ve and the third instance where the rocket has reached the final velocity v2 shortly after its engine shut down when all the propellant had been burnt. So I am next writing the equation of conservation of linear momentum. As uh, momentum is a vector quantity, I am choosing a direction which is my right side. So let's write the equation. m naught v1 equal dm multiplied by as the pro propellant's velocity is in the opposite direction to right side, I am applying negative sign Ve minus V plus M naught minus dm, which is the mass of the rocket at the second distance. We are writing the equation in relation to instance 1 and 2 and the velocity of the rocket itself V plus dv. Now I am expanding. So minus VE dm plus dm into V plus m naught V1 plus dv m naught. I am just removing the brackets. Minus dmv negative dm dv now we can make a small assumption as dm is an infinitesimal amount of mass and dv is an infinitesimal amount of velocity change we can get this product 
as much as closer to zero so we can neglect this so let's assume this is zero so this is not present now we can see, see that some quantities are cancelling uh, plus dmv and uh, minus dmv is cancelling and this one m not into v1 and m not into v1 is cancelling so what we are left with is 0 equal minus ve dm plus dv into m naught uh, actually uh, this is not m naught this is simply m these are all simply m's because we are writing the general format of the equation we are considering the mass of the rocket to be m and the m is changing as m naught and m minus dm these are all m's uh, this one all m's so this one is also m so we can rearrange the equation as v e d m equal d v into m again rearrange the equation 1 over m into d m equal 1 over v e into d v so now you can see it then we can integrate the both side of the equation so i'm integrating this side so the mass m changes from where to where it is uh, changing from the initial mass to the final mass understood the final mass is the rocket without any propellant and it's, it's the dry mass uh, m naught or the initial mass is referred to as the wet mass which is the weight of the rocket with the propellant uh, that means the dry mass of the rocket rocket and the addition of dry mass of the rocket and the weight of the propellant and then the velocity integration the limits are from initial velocity v1 to v2 so in integrating this thing you can see using the calculus this becomes ln is ln in two in the inside brackets ln m so limits are m naught to m f and then we can see here it comes the v e v over v e and the limits are from initial velocity to final velocity the ln is the natural logarithm you know and we can expand it ln mf minus ln m naught the right side we can write it as v1 over ve minus v2 over ve here as these are logarithms we can write this as division like this mf over m naught here we can take 1 over ve out and v1 minus v2 this quantity v1 minus v2 is the overall velocity change of the rocket in uh, astronautics we refer to this as the delta v or the velocity change so we are replacing this term so i am carrying this ve term as it is a constant to this side ve ln into mf over m naught equals delta v delta v is the velocity change as i mentioned before so uh, i'm just uh, writing in the beautiful way uh, usual way delta v is equal to v e l n m f o m naught 
this is the Tsiolkovsky's rocket equation and it is very important to de derive uh, and define the terms associated with this delta v is the velocity change of the rocket or any reaction device v e is the exhaust velocity of the rocket engine it is the velocity that the velocity uh, the engine shoots out gas exhaust velocity of the rocket engine and you must keep in mind that this ve is relative to the rocket frame of reference and mf is the final mass which is called as a dry mass where rocket has no end propellant it is the weight of the rocket itself and m naught is the initial mass it is the weight of the fully loaded rocket uh, with the propellant it's the it's called as the weight mass it is the propellant weight plus sorry propellant mass plus rocket mass and I hope it is clear to you the derivation and uh, one more important thing I have to mention that I am not an uh, astronautics or uh, aeronautical engineer so if there are any uh, erroneous things in my derivations and assumptions please feel free to point out them and basically feel free to blow the whistle so I hope you enjoyed the video please uh, like and subscribe my channel and see you through another video thank you thank you for watching